Hello and welcome. My name is Charlene Smith and I am here to preview today's game, Arsenal versus Aston Villa. Big game being played at the Emirates Stadium where three points is a must. We did see that Man City got a win yesterday and Liverpool will be playing at Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park today. So today is crucial that we get that all important win. Big up to everyone. Thank you so much for joining this stream. It is always a pleasure to be joined by you guys. Big up to Kalechi saying, good morning, beautiful. Good morning to you. Can't wait for the live show. Oh, we are here now, guys. So happy to have you here. So welcome to everyone. Big up to Chronicles of Benjamin, who is from Trinidad. Finally arrived on your YouTube channel. Oh, I'm glad that you found my YouTube channel. And it's great to have you here and have you a part of it. Yes, it's the same guy that has been offering an invitation to visit Trinidad and Tobago on your Instagram live. Listen, I would love to come and visit Trinidad and Tobago. Beautiful, beautiful country. I need to come soon. When is the best time to come? Is it better to come when it's carnival time? Because I know that time will be lit. I better get my uh, costume ready. Uh, yes, uh, big up to Ashoke saying, morning, Charlene, how are you? It looks like it's back to the long hair Smith today. And by the way, you're looking absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. I have reverted back to straight hair, as you can see. I did have my hair curly, but I just fancied a change. Um, when you've got curly hair, you need to put a lot of product in the hair. So that's what I noticed, like every day I was just sort of adding products to maintain the curls and to sort of keep my hair looking quite fresh. And I thought, do you know what? I just want fresh hair. I just want to wash my hair and wash all these products out and yeah, and just take a breather from the curls. So that's why I reverted to this. But don't worry, the curls are coming back soon. Big up to Osagi saying good morning. Good morning to you. Charles saying hi, Charlene. Hello to you. Michael saying, Shah, how are you doing? Hello, Michael. Guys, yes, I am I'm feeling okay. I'll be completely honest. I do feel a little bit tired. All of this preparation for the marathon has really uh, tested me, like, mentally, physically. Like, I feel quite tired. So this week is wind down week, which I'm really looking forward to, you know, just sort of taking it a bit lighter and preparing for race day. I think um, it's the the occasion. I have an understanding of how professional footballers feel, you know, when you've got something big coming up. Obviously, thank you as well to all of you guys who have sponsored me. Macmillan Cancer is the charity that I'm raising money for. So thank you for all of your kind donations. Um, obviously, you feel this sense of responsibility of, oh my God, I have, you know, a big race coming up that I need to prepare for. I need to be ready. I need to be fit. I need to complete it. So you've got all of those pressures, which, you know, it's in your control because it's how you manage them. And then it's like you're preparing, plus you're still, you know, living day to day life and working and everything like it's a lot. So I'm really looking forward to completing the marathon, being a part of the big day and getting it over with. And then, yeah, and then just, you know, progressing forward. So, yeah, that's how I'm feeling. I think I'm Maybe just, I don't know, thinking about the big day and maybe I'm just getting a bit nervous and a bit excited. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. But yes, the big day's coming up. So that's that's how I'm feeling right now. But I'm feeling really excited for today's game. I will be at the Emirates Stadium. So I will not be doing a live watch along for today's game. I know you guys enjoy them. I love watching the game with you guys. But today I will be at the Emirates um, supporting the team. As you can see, I'm not wearing my Arsenal shirt because I'm sitting somewhere special today. So I'm looking forward to being at the Emirates and yeah, and catching up with you guys post-match. And just as I've said that, I've just seen that Shake is asking, will you be at the game today? I will be, which I'm really looking forward to. Sha, I'll finally to get behind Arsenal for the league, provided that you don't win at Old Trafford. Is this Kalechi? Is this the Kalechi? who wants to marry me and become and become an Arsenal fan. Sorry, I had to just revisit that in my mind because that is wild. <laughs> I mean, I've had some crazy stuff in my life, yeah? <laughs> is it that, collective? Let me know. 
Hey Sha, three points incoming today, fully focused from start to finish, and my score prediction is 3-1. Come on, you gunners, and good morning. Good morning to you, Tyrone. Thank you for sharing your score prediction with us today. And being fully focused is the key message. That is the key thing that we need from these players today. Just stay focused throughout the whole game because Number one, Unai Emery is uh, who we're coming up against. And we do know that Aston Villa have got some attacking threats. And it's not just like their striker that we need to be weary of. You know, they've got players like McGinn, who did actually manage to score against us in the reverse fixture, where they got that 1-0 win at their place. So we need to stay focused defensively, you know, do what we do best. And am I right in thinking there's questions over... Gabrielle Magla Hayes. I'm sure I heard something about whether or not he'd be fit today. Let me know in the comments because I know you guys are quite active and on the ball with this stuff. So, is Gabby, uh, Gabby, Gabrielle looking um, a doubt for today? Let me know. <laughs> I know you guys probably come here for me to um, provide that to you, but I'm pretty sure I did hear in a press conference or something there was questions over Gabby. I mean, if that is the case and you know, he's not available, then we have got Kivio who can step into that position and then we could put Tomiyasu at left back. So I'm not highly concerned, but we do love our centre-back pairing of Gabriel and Saliba. So that is what we want to see. Big up to Ashoke saying, next Sunday, Shah, it's the big one. London Marathon, how's the training so far and are you ready? Yes, it is the big day. Who is going to come out and support me? at the London Marathon. I know a lot of you guys are international, so I know you'd be sending love and support from whatever country you're located in. But if there's anyone based over in the UK that will be attending the London Marathon, let me know. Throw some, seeing as I'm raising money for Macmillan Cancer and the theme colours for Macmillan is green and white. If you're going to be out supporting me, put some green and white hearts up in the chat. Let me know. But yes, it is the big day next week. It's literally seven days to go. I can't believe it. I remember when I signed up, it was, wow, when was it? Was it a year ago? Over a year ago. And I remember getting the all important email in the summertime and thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be part of the London Marathon. And I started getting mixed emotions like, bloody hell, this is exciting. And part of me was like, oh my God, you're crazy. But um, yeah, it's taken a lot of training to get to this point, um, a lot of mental strength as well, you know, on the days when you're like, I'm tired or I just don't want to run, you've got to push yourself. When it is like I've ran in every weather condition, pouring with rain, I was out running, snowing, I was out running, sunshine, I was out running, being abroad, I was out running. Like, literally, it has tested me in so many ways, which I'm so thankful for because. It has definitely given me strength and yes and everything. So I'm ready. I'm ready to take this challenge on. Like I want to get it done. Oh, big up to you guys showing so much love in the chat. Thank you. Um, I can't wait to do it. And thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys and just having your support on the sidelines, cheering me on, seeing you at the finish line and everything. So it's going to be a big, big, exciting day for everyone. I've heard the atmosphere is, it's like a street party. So let's get ready to party is what I'm saying. Big up to J1 Johnson, who is a regular, saying, Charlene, is there going to be a watch along for the game? Not today, as I will be at the Emirates Stadium. So no watch along today. But I will be back on Wednesday for our Champions League game. And I'll be doing a watch along then. Score prediction, darling. I love how you guys use my words on me. Definitely makes me smile. I'm going to I'm gonna get into my score prediction. I've got it in my mind. I've got it in my heart. So I'm going to come to that very, very soon. Smash the likes, people. You guys know the vibes. You know J1 Johnson's motto. Hit the like button. Let's get these likes up. So, yes, John C. say, I love you so much, Charlene. Oh, thank you. I love you so much. You guys always make me feel so loved when I come here. No one will snatch you away from me. I love you. Oh, I love you too, darling. I'm feeling, I'm definitely feeling the love today. I think this is what I needed. 
Big up Arsenal family. Yes, big up to all of our Arsenal family. Charlene, share the stream and don't forget to like. Good luck on the marathon. Come on, Charlene. Two nil Gunners. Oh, big up to Rodney. Thank you for sharing your prediction and the love. And this is definitely a family community that we have going on. And that is what I want to hear on race day. Come on, Charlene. <laughs> oh, mate. Guys, even if you do come out, where your um well, minus if you're not an Arsenal fan, uh, wear your Arsenal shirts. I mean, you'll definitely stand out. And yeah, it'd be make, it would make it easier for me to spot you as I'm running as well. And it is that Kalechi. Yes, it is. I, I just really don't know how to take your comment. I'll be real. I don't even know what you said today. Oh, good morning. And then you, I'm sure you said something else. Of, okay, you're finally getting behind Arsenal to win the league. Yes, you are. And that's because you want to be an Arsenal fan, because you would like to marry an Arsenal fan. Big up to Kelechi uh, for joining us. Arsenal will revenge with a 3-0 win. I mean, that will be beautiful. Man City scored five goals yesterday. Who are you more afraid of, Man U away or Tottenham away? Do you know what? Probably, oh, Tottenham got smoked yesterday by Newcastle, didn't they? I need to go and see expressions, his reaction to that. Do you know what? Man U, I mean, they did give Liverpool a battle. They could have actually won that game. Tottenham, North London derby. Oh, mate, it's probably, probably level with them, I would say. That is my opinion. I think it's pretty much level with them too. How about you? How are you feeling? My prediction, sweetheart, is 3-0. Big up to Ashoke with his prediction. Big up Chronicles of Benjamin saying 3-1. Saka hat trick. What? Saka to score all three goals. Okay. Big up to our name this account later. Charlene, what is your skincare routine? <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, my skincare routine, do you really want me to give it to you? Do you know, so even as you're asking, I'll tell you. So I cleanse every day. I sometimes wear a face mask. So I'll probably do a face mask twice a week um, after cleansing. And I moisturize. Normally in the day, I would just put a sun protection on straight away, factor 50. But I've noticed my skin being a little bit dry recently. I have been running out in the sun a lot. So I now have to moisturize because my face just seems a bit dry. So I moisturize and then put on a sun protection. And if it's a day that I'm wearing makeup, then I'll put my makeup on. If it's a day I'm not, then that is it. Then in the evening, I use a balm to remove my makeup. I then um, cleanse again, wash my face and I'll use retinol, which is really good. I use retinol once a week. And I moisturize. So it's just very, very basic. I have got toner. And to tell you the truth, I should be using it. And I just haven't been using it. So, yeah, that is my, my routine. I have got different bedtime creams as well, depending on whether or not I'm using a retinol. So if I'm using a retinol, it would be at bedtime. If not, then I've got another cream, which has hyaluronic acid and stuff like that. And then depending on how my skin's feeling, if it's feeling quite sensitive, because I have got sensitive skin, then I'll just use, you know, a good moisturizer that is just very calm, with not too much in it. So that's my routine. I hope that answers that. Oh, yeah. And I steam my face. Ideally, the plan is once a week, but sometimes life takes over and I don't have time for that. So I was actually meant to steam it yesterday and I didn't. So I am due to steam my face. And I actually bought this device which like, it's a suction thing. So you put it on your skin and like, you drag it across, but you cannot pause with it on your skin because like, it's a suction and it's got like water. I forgot what it's called. And basically like I done it and I did like leave red marks all over my face. So yeah, just be mindful of that if you've got one. But yeah, that's my skincare routine. Let me know yours. <laughs> I love your passion for the Arsenal. Keep it up. Listen, I think all of us Arsenal fans are really, really passionate. So, yeah, I guess it's just a lifestyle, you know. Prediction, um, passion is the way it is. 
Don't forget she has freckles on her face whenever the temperature is very hot. Thank you for reminding everyone, Ashoke. I have got freckles and they literally multiply in the sun. Like I will step out and my freckles will be, you know, there, but not that visible. And if it is a sunny day, like literally by the end of the day, my freckles have multiplied. Like my nose, so the areas I normally get freckles is like my nose, my cheeks. I've got a couple on my lips. But it's amazing how they just literally multiply. Um, but yeah, it's mainly like my cheek area and my nose. But yeah, I absolutely love, love my freckles. Such a beautiful feature. Has anyone else here got freckles? Let me know. Charlene, you bring everyone. I'm assuming that I should say smile. Thank you, darling. And you guys definitely make me smile. Big up to Nathalie, who is from Belgium, I believe. So big up to all of our Belgium family. Tai Cho is saying, I think Man U away is more difficult. Man U perform much more better at home than Tottenham. That is true. And yeah, they are definitely going to give us a battle. So we need to be focused for that game as well. And we need three points. Like every game is just a must win game now. Big up to Ashley Diwal saying, watching from Cape Town, South Africa. Big up to all of our South African family. Oliver Paul, we are going to smash you today, 3 0 to Villa. Oh, whatever, mate. We'll see. We're going to smash you, 3 0. Let's go. Remember, yeah, the Emirates Stadium. I'm guessing you have about 10 freckles. <laughs> I'll be honest, I have never, ever counted my freckles. And it just wouldn't make sense to because I can wake up in the morning and just have like a few like very light ones under my eyes. And then by the end of the day, like I can have like treble that amount, depending on what the weather is. So obviously in the summer, you're going to see more of my freckles. Thank you so much to The Real Fortune 143 for the super chat. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Saying big up to you, Charlene. I'm praying for three points. Yes, big up to you. Thank you for the super chat. And we need the three points. It is an absolute must today. Today will be such a beautiful day when we get the three points and Liverpool drop points at Sellers Park. <laughs> that would just be like the perfect Sunday, wouldn't it? But how are you guys feeling about that Liverpool game as well? Do let us know in the comments. I do love this. Oliver, Paul, you guys ain't beating no one. Tell them, Charlene. Yes, you know. Big up to Lloyd Campbellay saying, Lady Shah. I do love that. Always great to watch your game previews. City put five past Luton yesterday. Yes, I'm very aware of that. And thank you for being a part of my previews. We need to kill Villa today with a high scoring margin to raise that goal difference. I'm 4-0 to the Arsenal. I love that. And I love that confidence. And Yes, we need to get as many goals as we can because goal difference is absolutely crucial and important. So, yeah, we just need to be able to capitalise in every single way that we can. Big up to Mr. AG going for a 3-0 Arsenal win. Haha, <laughs> yeah, Liverpool need to drop points today. I beg. Yes, I am begging to. <laughs> Charlene, do you think Liverpool will continue to fall off? Mate, I am praying they fall off. <laughs> That is what I am hoping for. Big up to you, Charlene. Just shared your stream on Instagram and have told everyone to come and join and to like and subscribe to your channel. Oh, thank you so much, J1. That is so beautiful of you. Thank you. I really, really do appreciate the support. It means a lot to me. And J1 is going for a 5-0 Arsenal win. Big up to Kalechi saying, to be fair, I should be a Guna. Anyway, no, Kalechi is like the funniest person. I'm from N16. My first football game was 01 FA Cup final between Liverpool and Arsenal. And my first ground was Highbury. You are the icing on the cake. Okay, Kalechi, thank you for sharing this information with us. Why are you a Man U fan? Like, I am genuinely confused because. 
we can all see that in your heart, it's Arsenal. So what is going on? Who forced you into supporting Man U? Or was you just a glory hunter? Let us know. I'll take any win today so we can focus on the buying game. Yes, because that is another crucial game as well. Wait, we haven't actually spoken since the buying game. So how did you guys feel after the buying game? Uh, it was a two-all draw. I can't lie. I was really, really expecting a, a win. I really wanted to just capitalise on that opportunity. The fact that Bayern had no fans in the stadium. And we was at the Emirates. And the fact that, you know, the next fixture is now going to be at their place. I really, really wanted to capitalise. So I was proud of the team for the efforts they put out. It was two mistakes which led to those two goals. But part of me did feel a bit like, oh, man, like, we should have really got a win. And, yes, we was robbed of a penalty also. So I was disappointed with that. And I can see that you guys are all feeling that it should have been a penalty. You know, there was a lot of questions post-match about whether or not that should have been a penalty. I'm in agreement with you guys. That should have been a penalty. I was sat right by where Saka was. You can go and watch my match day vlog if you haven't seen that already because I was at the stadium. And it did look like a penalty from where I was. You can see that Saka was in a lot of pain. He did actually stay down as well. So that's why I was confused. Like, what has the game ended? Like, I didn't, I genuinely didn't know the game had finished. The referee blew the whistle. I didn't know. But yeah, that was mad. Zach, Zach is Mr. Negative. That's what I'm going to call you. It wasn't a pen penalty, Saka dive. Watch it in slow motion. You see how I changed my tone for that one? <laughs> Don't take it personal, Zach. <laughs> uh, what energy is that going to come with today? Oh, mate. Uh, big up to back off the net podcast. Hey, Charlene, I hope you're good. Bayern will be missing Davies, Gnabry. Oh, and Coleman. So it's a real 50-50 tie now. Mate, I can't lie. I wish they were missing Sane too. Okay, why are these players missing? Is that because of um, suspension or something? Mate, so we need to capitalise on this. But Sane, all right, we've been linked to Sane. And I was saying, I wouldn't mind him at Arsenal. I think he's a great player. And even in that game, he was causing us some problems. I was thinking, do you know what? Like, I could actually see this guy at Arsenal. Obviously, you know, you don't want him to do well against your team. But I was thinking, yeah, this guy is decent. I was, I knew he was a player to fare anyway. But what did you guys make of Sane? He'd be a good option to have. Okay. Charlene, don't worry. I think Arsenal will beat Villa 2-0. So, Zach is coming with some positive energy now. Love that. I really couldn't figure out why the Emirates Stadium were quiet against Bayern and I disliked that attitude. Michael, was you at the Emirates Stadium? Was you there for the game? I really don't recall the stadium being quiet. We were loud throughout the game. So did you watch it on TV or something like that? Let me know because the stadium was loud. Like we definitely got behind the team. We always do. So. Where did you get that information from? Let us know. Charlene, Sane is a baller. Hopefully we can get him in the summer. Yeah, I do like him. And obviously he's got that relationship with Mikel Arteta because they work together at Man City. And Sane did actually say in one of these press conferences that he still remembers what Mikel Arteta had taught him from their time together at Man City as well. So, you know, the relationship that they have together will just go hand in hand. So and the fact that he's taken note of what Mikel Arteta has taught him, you know, bring that to Arsenal. For me, start Martinelli, have a Saka to Aston Villa and Munch and Trossard, Jesus, Saka. I'm assuming Munch and means bring on. Um, that is what Natalie would like to see. I wasn't there, but I watched the game. Okay, so obviously when you watch the game, the energy is different. Being in the stadium and watching the game is two completely different experiences. When you're watching the game on TV or whatever device you're watching the game, you are shown 
different camera angles, you know, you're shown different things. Whereas when, and you don't really fully get to hear what's happening in the stadium because you've got the commentary team, you know, the the mics are turned down or whatever. You've got the sound control, you've got the commentary team. Whereas when you are in the stadium, it is loud throughout, throughout the game. Like there isn't really moments where, you know, it's quiet. So it's very loud throughout the whole game. And, you know, you get to see the full pitch. You get to see everything that's happening. Whereas when you watch it somewhere else, you just get aspects. So I can tell you now that it was loud and it was rocking in the stadium. What other sports do you watch? Okay, so I like a bit of tennis. I wouldn't say like I'm a, I watch every game of tennis and follow it. I like to watch a bit of tennis. My daughter plays basketball, so I watch basketball as well. Again, not religiously, like like football is my sport. That is what I will sit and watch all the time. Whereas I like tennis, I like basketball, and I like, you know, running. So athletics, I guess. So yes, oh, Munich. <laughs> I always learn something new. So, um, yeah, that is the sports that I like. How about you guys? I like playing, like, crazy golf. <laughs> Notice how I didn't say golf, because I've never played a professional game of golf or, like, a proper game. So I like playing crazy golf. What about you guys? Do you watch any other sports and do you follow them? Watching live is 10 times better. Yeah, it's a completely different experience. Yes, and Zach does agree with me. It's just so, so different, you know, to be at the stadium and to just be there with the team. All right, guys. So I have actually got some stats that I would like to share with you guys ahead of today's game, Arsenal versus Aston Villa, which is being played at the Emirates Stadium, 4.30 p.m. kickoff in the UK. So obviously, depending on where you are located in the world, then that time will vary. Arsenal have won five of their last six home Premier League games against Aston Villa, losing the other 3-0 in November 2020. Following their 1-0 win against them at Villa Park in December, Aston Villa are looking to complete just their third Premier League double over Arsenal, previously doing so in 1992-93, and 2020 to 21. So we do know that um, Villa did get that 1-0 win over us, where it was McGinn who did actually score that goal for them. Aston Villa are unbeaten in their last nine Premier League away games against London sides, where they have won six and drawn three. Having lost eight of their previous nine before this, where they have won one. It's the villain's longest run without defeat in the capital in their league history. Arsenal have won 10 of their last 11 Premier League games where they've drawn one, scoring at least twice in each victory. The Gunners have conceded just four goals across these 11 games, though three of those have been at the Emirates Stadium. And one last stat to share with you guys, Aston Villa lost 4-1 at Manchester City in their last Premier League away game, but haven't lost consecutively on the road since May 2023. However, they've lost each of their three away games against last season's top four so far by an aggregate score of 12-4. And just to let you guys know as well, as it currently stands, Aston Villa are sitting fourth in the Premier League table. So we do know that Aston Villa, I mean, the table doesn't lie, you know, that kind of says it all. They are capable of getting results from games. They do have some players that we, you know, need to be mindful of as well. I guess on the flip side, you know, we need to remember who we are. We are Arsenal Football Club. We need to remember what it is that we're fighting for this season. We need to remember the form that we are on. You know, we're doing a fantastic job so far. And like you guys agree as well, we just need to make sure we stay focused and do the things that we do best, which is defending well, scoring goals 
and being switched on throughout the whole duration of the game. That is the key message to the players today. Ashoke is wondering where I get my stats from. Listen, I got my sources, darling. I got my sources who provide me with this. Do you read stats as well? Charlene, would you take Gnabry back to Arsenal? I would love to have him back. I mean, he was a threat over on the other side. Um, my preference would be Sane, if I am completely honest on that one. Charlene, I think Kivio should be dropped. He was terrible against Bayern, even though I don't rate him. We should start Tomiyasu. Yes. Um, I mean, to, if I'm being completely honest, I don't think that was Kivio's best performance. And I agree with Mikel Arteta's substitution when he did sub him off. I know that Kivio is capable of performing to a much better standard. So I don't know if it was just the pressure or if, he just wasn't on it. You know, we get our moments where we're just not feeling something sometimes. Or maybe it was the pressure of the occasion or or something. But he definitely wasn't performing to the standard that we know that he can perform at. I would love to hear you guys' starting 11. So do send them in. I am going to share my one with you. I do want to know the fitness of Gabriel Magla-Hayes. Um, I wonder if he is fit to start today. I'm hoping he is, but um, I'm going to share with you what I think the starting 11 should be. So we know David Rea will start in goal. Back four of Ben White, our favourite centre-back pairing of Saliba and Gabriel, if Gabriel is available. If he's not, then I'll start Kivio there and put Tomiyasu at left pack. However, if Gabby is available and he's playing, then I will start Gabby. And who will I start at left back? Do you know what? Um, Kivio didn't have the best performance, but I will start him today. I feel like it was just a blip. He's not consistently a bad player, if you get what I mean. I like him. I think he's quality. It was the right decision to sub him off. Who knows? Maybe he had an upset stomach. You know, you just don't know what is going on with these players. So if he is okay, then I will start Kivio. I don't feel like, okay. You know, that was a bad performance to so drop him because he's a good player. So that is what I would start there. Midfield, Odegaard, Rice and Jorginho is who I'd start. Front three, Saka, Martinelli and Havertz. So as you guys can see, I'm pretty much keeping it the same as what it normally is. That is what I would like to see. Let me know your thoughts also. Charlene Kivio has been good this season. Yeah, I agree with you. So, you know, we all have a, an off day and that's okay. But providing he's okay and he's feeling good within himself, then he comes straight back in. And I totally agree with you, J1. Every player has bad games. And I guess the expectation is just that, you know, these players are just going to turn up and perform every single time. We need to understand they're humans as well, you know, just like how you guys in your professions and whatever it is you do, you know, you do to a good high standard. But there's days where actually your performance is just a bit off. You know, maybe mentally you're just not there or maybe you're tired or maybe you're unwell. Like, who knows? But we can't expect perfection each and every single time. Charlene, are you going to come back for a post-match show after the game? I plan to. It just depends on what time I get back. So I do plan to come back and do a post-match show, but it just depends what happens today because sometimes I get caught up. So the plan is to come back and do it, but I will let you guys know in advance if I am going to be doing that. Thank you to Usops for sharing his starting 11, which is Rhea, White, Gabby, Saliba, Tommy, Partey, Rice, Odegaard, Saka, Havertz and Martinelli. I do love this. I can see the only difference that you have made is Partey starting over Jorginho in comparison to mine. Big up to Lloyd with he starting 11, which is Rhea, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Tomiyasu, Odegaard, Partey, Rice, Saka, Jesus, Martinelli. The bench is strong. Thank you for sharing that. I do like your starting 11. 
also. And it's so nice when we have a strong bench, you know, when you sub someone off and you could just bring on, you know, another great quality player. So, yes. Big up to Ashoke as well. I see your comment. Don't forget, Charlene, you've got a forfeit to do. I was actually thinking about this today and I was like, I'm doing a show. I'll be completely honest. I was like, oh my God, I do not have a Scotch bonnet pepper in my house right now. And I'm going to the Emirates. So I thought, do you know, I'm going to do this on the next show because I don't want to eat a Scotch bonnet and it has an adverse effect on me. And I'm going to be at the Emirates. So, yes. So I haven't forgotten about that. And we do need to go over the results as well. What up, though? Big up to Semp Fid. Where are you located? Trossard ahead of Martinelli, says Lionel Evans. Okay, Martinelli needs the minutes. Okay, we've got a little debate going on here. If I'm honest, I love having Trossard come off the bench. I feel like he's so effective. Like, Trossard is that guy who will come off the bench and bang a goal. So, start Martinelli. Martinelli's fast. He's pacey. So, start Martinelli and bring Trossard off the bench is my opinion. That's what I love to see. But, obviously, all of your opinions are welcome. And Lionel... Would love to see Trossard start ahead of Martinelli. Congratulations on hitting 40 likes, Charlene. Keep smashing the likes. Let's get to 50. Thank you so much, J1. And thank you to all of you for liking this video as well. Keep those likes coming in, baby. Big up to Napoli with her starting 11, which is Rhea, Tomiyasu, Kivio. So Gabrielle is injured. <gasps> I really hope he's back soon. He's a key player for us. White. Um, okay, so that's one, two, three. So back three. Wait, can I count? Tommy Kivio. So I'm assuming you just forgot Saliba. Yeah, I'm just going to assume that you forgot Saliba. So it should be Rhea, Tommy Kivio, Saliba, and White, which will make one, two, three, four. Sorry, I've actually got a count. <laughs> and then Odegaard, Rice, Partey. Martinelli, Havertz, and Saka. All right, I can see you guys really want to see Partey and Rice um, starting. You guys really want that, I can see. I agree, Charlene. Trossard is a super sub. Bring him off the bench. <laughs> I love it. Do 20 push-ups. I'm saying that in a stern voice as well. Do 20 push-ups. It's okay. Me, I'm going to bring the scotch bonnet. And that me, I say. Oi, right, where's our where's our matey um, from South London, who's always here, who's always getting a takeaway? Where are you at? I forgot your name. Where what's his name again? You guys know exactly who I'm talking about. He's Jamaican, but he lives in South London, and he always shares his meals with us. The reason I've forgotten his name is because he keeps changing his um, YouTube account, whichever one he signs into. All right, big up to Seth, who is going for Ramsdale, White, Saliba, Gabrielle. So our understanding is I'm not sure if Gabrielle's available. Zinchenko. Okay, interesting. Rice, Partey. Everyone wants Rice, Partey to start. Trossard, Jesus, Havertz, and Saka. I love how you put Saka in big, bold capital letters. This game will be easier like what we did to West Ham. I, I cannot lie. I would love... If we kick off the game and we just bang some goals, like, you know, to like what we've done to West Ham and Sheffield, like where the fans start leaving early before half time, stadium is empty. That that will be a perfect Sunday. I want to see that. Um, can we do that today, please? Can we just have a game like that? Like, I feel like we do it. That would just be such a great atmosphere. Must win for us gunners, says Steve. It definitely is. Big up to Zach. I rate Partey. He is a quality player, but I personally wouldn't start him. I feel like he's not ready to play again. I say we just sell him in the summer and get the money. Surprise, surprise from Zach. All right, guys, what is your score predictions for today? Now, prior to this live stream, I did have my score prediction in mind, which was 2-0 Arsenal. And I don't know, you guys are just making me feel like I need to well, not even making me feel like, that is the wrong word. You guys are just making me feel more confident and I feel like I want to change my score prediction. But part of me is like, stick with your 2-0, Shah. 
But part of me is like, we're going to smoke these boys today. So let me know your score prediction. And just as I said that, Seth has come straight in with a 4-0 Arsenal win. By the way, do you have any information on Timba? So my understanding of Timba is he is back in training and he needs to play some minutes with the under 23. So it looks like he's very, very close to making a return. So he needs to get some minutes in his leg is my understanding. I would say I would start Partey today because their midfield is light without. Oh, yeah. No, Douglas Louise and Partey needs match fitness. Yes, I forgot. Douglas Louise will not be playing in today's game. So that is good for us. Big up to Danica Brown saying, yo, Charlene, 3-1 today. I mean, that'd be great. Big up to Natalie saying 3-1 and wanting a front three of Odegaard, Trossard and Saka. No disrespect to Sheffield United, but they are relegation fodder. Aston Villa will be a lot tougher. I do think we will get the job done, although I am saying 2-0. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, the table says it all, you know. Sheffield are sitting in, what, 20th place and Villa are sitting in fourth place. So that kind of says that, that, <laughs> that is what it is. <laughs> Yellow, 10 suspected, Douglas Louise, Aston missing game today. Yes, yeah, so he will not be part of today's game. Mr. AG is going for a 3-0 Arsenal win. Usopp's going 2-0 Arsenal. Charlene, I feel a last minute winner again from Nelson today. I mean, that'd be fantastic for his confidence as well. Charlene, would you take Douglas Louise at Arsenal? I don't really rate him, but I do think he is a is good for squad depth and is a massive upgrade to the likes of El Nene. I do like El Nene. I think El Nene is a good player and you know he can get a job done. So I do like having El Nene as an option. I do also like Douglas Louise, and he is the player that. I did want to bring into Arsenal. However, his price tag seems to have gone up, which is my understanding, you know. I mean, players do increase in value depending on, you know, how they're performing and everything. But I wouldn't play pay over the odds for Douglas Louise. But he is a great player who I would take. And as you saw from my reaction, I was happy that um, he's not playing against us today. So that just kind of says, you know, the qualities that he possesses. So. Yes, I would. I would take him, but not for some crazy price. Big up to J1, who is feeling confident and going for a 5-0 Arsenal win. Mate, that would be amazing. Hopefully, El Nenny stays. Would you take Watkins, Charlene? If I'm honest, Watkins does not excite me. You know, he's a good player, but he doesn't get me excited. You know, there's other players who I would take over Watkins. Anyway, let me not say too much on this in case he does become our player. And then it's like, yes, we signed Watkins. <laughs> he wouldn't be my first choice, is what I'm saying. I had a dream that Arsenal would beat Bayern 3-2 after taking a 3-0 lead. If I'm right, let's have a dinner. Oh, my God. Kalechi, what is this? I want this. You are dreaming about Arsenal. Wait, can, let me just first of all state that Kalechi is a Man U fan. And he's having dreams about Arsenal beating Bayern 3-2. And wants to take me, an Arsenal fan, out to dinner if he's correct. Guys, let me know your thoughts. <laughs> just, I really don't. I, I actually genuinely don't know how to respond. <laughs> Big up to Chelsea boy saying, have you considered the high rocks? I'm going to be totally honest with you. So obviously my challenge is the London Marathon next week. And I am already planning my next challenge for after that. I did actually have a friend message me saying, are you up for this? And it was the high rocks. I have had a look at it and I'm like, this is amazing. So High Rocks is probably going to be my next challenge. So after London Marathon, High Rocks is my next thing to do. Because even on my run, my long run last week, I was thinking, okay, I've been preparing for the London Marathon, but when it's all done, like, what am I going to do next? And I thought, maybe cycling. And then, yeah, now it's come to light that I'll be doing High Rocks. So let me know if there's anyone else who will be doing High Rocks as well. Um, it looks exciting. It looks so fun. 
And guys, I'll be real. I just can't wait to get in the gym and lift some heavy weights and all of that. Charlene, big up from Kenya. We love you and we follow. Visit us one day. Free nil for, gun for us gunners. Oh, big up to Steve and all of our Kenyan family. Listen, I would absolutely love to visit Kenya. I'm excited to visit Kenya. So, yes, that is definitely a place I would love to come. And I'm sending loads and loads of love to you all. Thank you so much for supporting and for following me. I honestly appreciate you all. So sending loads of love to you all over in Kenya. Big up our Kenyan gooners. I love this. Kalechi, respond with a yes. You guys are too funny. I am doing a High Rocks. Amazing. Listen, there's so many locations that High Rocks is taking place. Like there's countless locations. Have you got a location? Where are you going to be doing it? Okay. Charlene, I'm thinking after the London Marathon, you do a run from London to Glasgow. Backside to Glasgow, you know. How many kilometers is that, darling? Backside. I mean, that would definitely be a challenge. That would be a challenge. Not even Manchester, you know. Glasgow. Big up to Lloydie saying 3 1. Raya, Ben, Saliba, Gabrielle, Tomiyasu, Odegaard, Jorginho, Rice, Saka, Havertz, and Jesus. Big up to Mr. AG with his starting 11 for today. I can see that you guys really want Jesus to start also. Big up, Charlene. Three points today. Incoming 3 1 Arsenal. Come on, you gunners. Big up to you, Tyrell. Loving the energy. I am noticing that you guys are predicting to so the trends I'm noticing is Arsenal to score three goals today um, is sort of what it's averaging out to be. And Lloydie thinks that Watkins will score for them. I do feel a bit upset about Gabby. Do you know what? If Gabrielle Magla Hayes is not playing, then I'm going to go 3-1. If he is playing, I'm going 2-0. So that is my predictions. At present, I've got two predictions. Stay tuned on my Instagram because I'll be doing my usual score prediction from the Emirates to let you know what my prediction is. But there's so many comments here. I know there's a few that I've missed because there's just too many. So do forgive me if I didn't get an opportunity to read your comments. t 14 is going 2-0 Saka Brace. Love that. I want Jesus to start against Bayern, so I would start him today. I mean, even if he gets a, a run out, you know, from the 60 plus minute. 623 kilometers. Ashoka, you're crazy. You are crazy. You want me? Listen, I'd do that if I'm having like breaks in between. But oh, actually, I don't know. Mentally, I don't know if I can do that. Like 623 kilometers. I do love a challenge, but London Marathon's 41. Like that is challenging enough. 623. Do I get like a couple of days rest in between? I don't know if I could do that. I'll be real. Tyrell's saying that he rates Watkins. He's a good number nine. Big up to Keith Jackson saying, Charlene, you have a huge fan base in Kenya. We love and 4-0 to the Gunners and King Kai on the hat trick. Oh my God, this is so touching to know that I have a huge fan base in Kenya. Wow, that is, yeah, that is like, that's left me speechless. Like, I'm so, so grateful to all of you over in Kenya. So thank you for your love and your support. I appreciate you all. And I would love to come and visit you guys and meet you in Kenya. You know, it's definitely on my places to go list. Like, there's so many amazing countries that you guys put up here where you show me so much love and support. And I really... I really do one day want to come and visit you all and just, you know, share the love back. So thank you. And I do love your score prediction. And Kai to get a hat trick would just be amazing. That would just be unreal. He deserves it. Like, I love Kai. He deserves it. So Chelsea Boy is doing the winter one, which is in October. What location is that? Is that Paris? I can't remember off the top of my head. People on this chat, check out my tune, Arsenal FC. Do you know, I did try to find it, Lloydie. I'll be honest. When I came off that last stream, I tried to find it, but I couldn't see it for some reason. 
Um, okay, so Chelsea boy doesn't want to do the summer high rocks because it's too hot. I was thinking, are they going to do one in Dubai? Because fitness is big over in Dubai. Obviously, it would need to be in a location where the aircon is on point. Mr. AG saying, Saka, 14 goals, 8 assists, Charlene. Listen, Saka is our star boy. This boy delivers. Lloyd, doesn't want to see Kivio start. Is that because of his last performance? Big up to Chile saying, pull up to Spain. I've been in Spain quite a few times. I'd definitely love to come back. I love Spain. But I have been there quite a few times. But I would love to come and visit you guys in Spain. Let me know where in Spain you're located. Yusop saying, you have a fan base everywhere. Who doesn't love Charlene? Oh, thank you, guys. And yes, I am aware of this because whenever I travel... Like, people are always showing me so much love, you know, every country that I've been to, you know, since, you know, being out there with football and showing my love for Arsenal and everything, you know, wherever I go, there's always, you know, fans and Arsenal fans everywhere who show me love and support, who are excited to meet me and everything. So, yes, I, I am aware that there is a worldwide fan base and, yeah, I'm grateful to all of you guys. So, thank you for supporting me everywhere in the world like i truly truly appreciate you all and i would love to come and visit your country so tour is pending it's on youtube and spotify okay i'm gonna i'm gonna look again all right congratulations on 50 likes charlene let's get her to 60 for providing these amazing streams oh thank you guys you guys are proper, proper supporters. I really do appreciate this. I am going to start to round off this stream, though. It has been a great pleasure speaking to you guys. And as always, I am always excited to speak to you. And I do miss you guys when I don't speak to you. So I am going to try my hardest as well to get back at a good suitable time so I can provide a post-match stream as well because it will be a great um a great thing to do because I will be at the Emirates today. So there'll be no watch along. Ashoke saying, if you're feeling tired, go to the petrol shopping station and grab a water. Oh, it takes a lot more than that. So yes, you always come with positivity. Absolutely love it. And you guys come with a lot of positivity as well. So thank you. And I love you guys support as well and your involvement in these shows. Kai Havertz, nine goals, five assists. It's been a good stream. We're going to do this. Come on, you Gunners. Let's go. Arsenal Gunners top. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will be at the Emirates Stadium showing my love and support to the team today. Wherever you are located in the world, I'm sending lots and lots of love to you. Big, big game today for Arsenal. It's a must win at the Emirates Stadium. Where is Arsenal versus Aston Villa? If you are watching this video back, do get active in the comments. Put your predicted 11, put your score predictions. It's always great to have your involvement. Guys, thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for being a part of this stream. You guys mean so much to you, to me. I'm sending so much love to you. And guys, let's go out there today and get the three points against Aston Villa. Come on, you gunners. Let's go. I'm Charlene Smith and I'm signing out. Bye for now.